Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about using your iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. Welcome back to another episode of iPad Pros. I hope everyone's enjoying iPad OS. This is an extra bonus episode I've been wanting to do since I first heard about iPad OS. In the episode coming up, you will hear from many different developers and how they've updated their apps for iPad OS and if they have any general thoughts on iPad OS. I welcome that feedback as well. The second part of the episode, I'll be covering some of the other apps from developers that didn't have a chance to send in any audio. If there are any big updates out from apps I didn't cover, please let me know. You can send that feedback to iPadProsPodcast at gmail.com. If you do want to support the podcast as well as get episodes early and bonus content, please head on over to patreon.com slash iPadPros. Any and all support there is greatly appreciated, and every dollar goes a long way in helping with the production of this podcast. Also, if you haven't reviewed the podcast yet on Apple Podcasts, I'd really appreciate a few minutes of your time to do that. Every review is extremely helpful in helping others discover the show. Without further delay, here's my developer spotlight episode all about the new iPad OS app updates. Enjoy. First up is my password manager of choice on iOS and iPad OS, 1Password. And something really intriguing about this update is the document handling. And I may start to reconsider how I actually work with sensitive documents and actually using 1Password as kind of the document manager for that sensitive stuff. So take a listen. Hey, everyone. Michael Fay from 1Password here. We have a great update that's all set and ready for you when you update your iPad to iPad OS. Uh, the first up, you'll notice we've got full dark mode support. This is how I've been using my iPad exclusively uh, ever since I've you know since I've been running the betas and everything else. Uh, and uh, one password looks so so good in dark mode. Uh, it's really really nice just to sort of have that that subdued user interface. Uh, across all the apps and everything, and, and I'm really excited that, that we've got 1Password there as well. We've also added a new dark mode icon, uh, so if you're interested, you can go check that out within 1Password settings, tap over to general, uh, and you can change the app icon right there. I personally keep 1Password in my dock, and the new dark mode icon looks looks really sharp there. The other thing that we've brought to this 1Password update is full support for voice control, which is new in iOS 13 and iPadOS. Uh, the ability to control your apps using just your voice is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's a real game changer. Uh, you can just use natural language commands to say things like open 1Password and tap favorites and tap search, and then you can just dictate your search command and and then you can go and t you know tell it to tap one of your items, and you can just call it out by name. You can interact with the entire app with just your voice, and we spent a lot of time trying to make sure we got that right. Uh, it's built on top of a lot of the accessibility work that we've done in the past, and it's it's really, really cool, and we're really excited to, to be able to support that uh, on day one. The last big addition to this update is something that people have been asking for for a while, which is more document support. Uh, for a while now, we've had the ability to add documents to 1Password just from the camera roll. Uh, with this update now, you can add documents from the camera roll, as always, but you can also add them directly from the camera itself, so you can just bring up the camera and take a picture and add it as a document to 1Password. You can also add files from the Files app, so anyone that's added support for Files app in the past, you know, Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, or any other app that has Files app support, you can now add those files directly to 1Password. We've also added the ability to use something that's brand new in iPadOS, which is the Document Scanner. Using the camera, you can point it at your at your paperwork that you have on your desk. You'll see a nice frame drawn around it, and then you hit the capture button, and it'll create this really nice PDF all squared off and everything. And then it will also do optical character recognition and add that as a textual summary right to the item that you've just created. So it's a really cool way you can actually search for your text that appears within your documents that you've scanned into 1Password, stored securely there. They're available on all your devices where you have 1Password installed. Uh, it's a really, really cool feature, and we're, we're really excited to bring that as well. This update is out today, so as soon as you update your iPad to iPadOS, you can be able to take advantage of all these cool new things. So that's it. That's our update for iPadOS. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that we've also added in, some some uh, some bug fixes, some enhancements, and, and whatnot. You can go check out the release notes on the App Store. We keep very comprehensive release notes there. Uh, so feel free to go check that out. And uh, yeah, that's what we got. All right, thanks, everybody. 
Next up is Agenda, an app I'm using more and more these days in conjunction with OmniFocus to stay on track. And the pencil support is really going to be awesome for when I am sketching out some ideas and having all that in one place within Agenda. So here's Drew from Agenda. Hi, this is Drew McCormack, founder and developer on Agenda app. If you don't know what Agenda is, it's a note-taking app with a strong focus on dates. And it's really great for any project work you do, meetings, personal projects, even a diary, anything that has a timeline. It's got a really tight integration with calendars and reminders, so perfect for any task-oriented note-taking. iPad OS and iOS 13 were really important releases for us for a long time. People have been asking for handwriting and drawing, and we were able to deliver that thanks to Apple in this uh, release cycle. Apple gave us the tools to support Pencil natively on iPad. That was probably the biggest feature for Agenda in iPad OS. We were also able to add document scanning, where you create a, a PDF, just like in the, in the Apple Notes app. And that, again, was a, a feature that Apple added in iOS 13. We've had dark mode for a while in Agenda, unofficially, basically a switch that we built in. But with iOS 13, we've been able to integrate that with the system. So that's also been a great addition for us. There's so much actually in iPadOS and iOS 13 that it's been difficult for us to get to everything before the final release. And we're still working on some aspects. For example, we've started working on sign-in with Apple. That's going to take a little bit more work. And we need to do some more groundwork to add better shortcuts and multiple window support. Shortcuts is something that we've already got in Agenda, but to add the new shortcut features, we need to do a little bit more groundwork that'll take a little bit longer. But overall, we're really happy with iPad OS. The, the launch itself was a bit shaky. Uh, you might have heard about some problems for developers there, but it, overall, the features that they've added have been great and they fit nicely into Agenda, so we're really happy. Next up is my writing app of choice, Ulysses. And as Max says, the multi-window support is really game-changing in how it affects a writing app like Ulysses. So take a listen. Hello, listeners of the iPad Pros podcast. This is Max from Ulysses. I'm the co-founder and lead developer here on the team. Ulysses will be updated for iOS 13 and iPad OS coming with the new version 18. We will have all the new features of the new OSs in there. So we'll replace our custom dark mode that we've had for multiple years with the new system-wide dark mode, adapt all the colors and adjust the style. We will replace our current second editor functionality with the new system-wide split view that allows you to run multiple instances of the same app uh, next to each other or across multiple spaces. We have also reworked the entire interface to match the visual style of the new OSs, and we've adopted the SF symbol icon style for everything. Ulysses should look and feel right at home in the new environment. Speaking of iPad OS in general, we think that iPad will see new heights in terms of productivity and usability. The new split view will enable a lot of desktop-like work environments, for example, like writing on one side and previewing the export results on the other side of the screen, which is possible on the Mac right now and is now coming to iPad as well. For a writing app like Ulysses, a lot of the magic lies in the details. And so we are very, very happy that Apple has uh, improved the text selection gestures. The text loop is gone and that they have introduced the new three finger gestures for undo, redo, copy and paste and so forth. A lot of our users have used iPad as their main device for a long time already, and iPad OS will enable a lot more to follow suit, we think. We are looking forward to the release of Ulysses 18 on September 30th, and I hope you go check it out and have a look. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Next up is Canis, the developer of Hawksite and Ferret, the application I'm using right now to edit this podcast. And just something really interesting I found in his notes is that those three-finger gestures also work for just copying audio rather than text, which is really cool. So have a listen. Hello, Canis here from Woogie Juice. Tim asked me to say a few words about the iOS 13 updates for our pro audio apps, Hawksite and Ferret. If you're not familiar with them, Ferrite is for producing podcasts, audiobooks, radio journalism, and other long-form spoken word projects like that while Hokusai is more of a multi-tool for applying detailed editing to shorter audio projects, such as designing sound effects. Tim interviewed me in iPad Pro's episode 34 if you want to know more. 
As I record this, we're waiting for Apple to approve some point one updates, so I don't know exactly what will be available when this episode goes out. There's a bunch of stuff planned, and some already released. Both Ferrite and Hokusai have updates available right now that add dark mode and support new iOS 13 UI like pop-up cards that you can swipe away. Bolder, rounder toolbar icons, they support the new three-finger editing gestures for things like copying audio or undo and redo, as well as the new gesture for quickly selecting multiple files in the library by dragging across them with two fingers. And in Hokusai, you can also use the new context menus to quickly share, duplicate or delete projects. And iOS 13 adds support for USB storage devices like external drives or SD card readers, handy for importing audio from field recorders. Once Apple approved the point one updates on iPad OS 13, both Ferrite and Hokusai will support multiple windows. They've both supported split screen for years, but now you'll be able to have multiple instances of the same app side by side. And we have more Ferrite updates planned, hopefully for next month, with a bunch of new features for users on iOS 13. I can't make any promises at this stage, but you might want to keep an eye out. You can follow me on Twitter at Wooji, that's W-O-O-J-I. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't updated your OS yet, don't worry. Both apps still run on iOS 12.4 as well. Thanks for listening. Next up is Working Copy, the popular Git client for iOS and iPadOS, and I'm really excited to play around with the new shortcut support that he talks about here. In this clip, take a listen. I'm Anas Bohum, and I make Working Copy a Git client for iPad. With Working Copy on iPadOS, you'll be able to have several windows open. You could be editing a markdown file and looking at the diff at the same time, or have several editors open when working on large projects. A nice improvement to iPadOS are the context menus that have been adopted throughout the app. What I'm most excited about are the improvements to the Shortcuts app. Working Copy provides actions that the user can customize where the result from one action can be passed as input to the next. You could read or write files into repositories and commit and push, all from a shortcut. This allows productivity apps such as Working Copy to be used in entirely new ways. As more third-party apps support this, the Shortcuts app is going to increase in power. All this power will attract new users to Shortcuts. I can't wait to see what they come up with. Next up is the Icon Factory, the makers of Linea Sketch and Twitterific, and some really solid updates you'll hear about. And with Twitterific, I'm super excited for multi-window support. This is something that I have not yet seen a Twitter client do on iPadOS, and something I'm really eager to see happen. So have a listen. Hi, I'm Gideon Mayhew from the Icon Factory, and I'm the lead designer for Linea Sketch for the iPad and Linea Go for the iPhone, digital sketching made easy. And we have updated the app for iPad OS to include support for dark mode, which is pretty darn cool. Check it out. We've also added a bunch of new features that people have been asking for, including uh, support for exporting sketches as multi-page PDF files. Um, we've also added a way in the action menu for people to set the default paper type and templates used for new sketches. So you don't have to set that every time you create a new drawing. Uh, we added zip line snapping, so you can have zip lines automatically snap to straight angles, 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. And we've also added a bunch of larger pen sizes within the app. Open the pen tool and then swipe between brush size page settings to get to the new larger sizes. I uh, also briefly want to talk about our Twitter app, Twitterific. We are planning an update for iOS 13 for that. We're in the process of working on that now, we're fixing some color theme bugs, things like that. Um, and we're also working towards support for multiple window support for Twitterific. So, thanks. Up next is the popular handwriting note-taking app, Notability. Listen back to episode 60 of this podcast to hear from Isaac and how he uses it as a student. Hi, my name is Claire. I'm a developer on the Notability team, and I'm here to talk about some of the exciting new things we have in our latest release. Look out for our 9.run release. We added support for iOS 13, including document scanning, dark mode, and system undo and redo gestures. It's now easy to scan your paper documents and go totally digital. You can use your camera to scan documents and create PDFs on the spot. The text in the scanned documents and even in images within documents will be searchable. This enables quick reference to anything in your lecture notes or textbooks. We know many of our users are students, so we wanted to make studying as seamless as possible. We are constantly making general improvements to the app so that it functions intuitively for our users. One thing I have personally worked on is improving the import flow, so you can easily import multiple files from AirDrop, cloud services, and other apps. 
Now when you import files, you can choose to import all of them into a single note or create a new note for each file. Whether you're importing documents, images, audio files, or all of the above, the new import experience will give you more control in order to improve your workflow. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy using Notability. And last up from the developers that sent in audio is Matt, the maker of Yoink. Have a listen. Hi, Tim. Thank you for having me on your iPad Pros podcast. My name is Matt. I'm the developer of Eternal Storm Software, responsible for the Mac and iOS apps Yoink, ScreenFloat, Transloader, Flickery, and more. Yoink for iPad and iPhone fully supports iOS 13. Most prominently, it supports dark mode, improves and adds some new Siri shortcuts based on the new parameter system, and supports low data mode. For example, when loading website previews, instead of loading the entire web page, it only retrieves the site's icon. Also, it now works with iOS multitasking gestures, like pinch to copy, three finger double tap to undo, and so forth. Finally, the app uses the new Quick Look APIs to be able to provide nicer and richer previews for all sorts of documents. Personally, I like iOS 13 quite a bit, especially on iPad. What I like most about it are the new contextual menus, which Yoink also makes use of, just because now they're available on all devices, not just those that support 3D touch. I'm also a big fan of SF symbols. So next up, let's talk about all of the apps that I didn't get any audio from the developers on. Let's start with the Omni Group. You may have heard episode 59 of this podcast where Ken Case, the CEO of the Omni Group, spoke with me about all the updates in the works. And here's what's kind of coming out very soon. Uh, Omni Outliner 3.4 is in the GM stage in test flight, and it adds that new document browser using Apple's built-in file browser, automatic dark mode switching, it adds multitasking with the multi-window support on iPad OS, and this is going to be huge. And there's a bunch of other refinements and enhancements you'll find in here as well. So Omni Outliner 3.4 coming soon. Next up is Omni Graphel 3.11, which will adopt the multi-window support in iPad OS. It'll have contextual menus. It'll have dark mode. It'll have a bunch of other just really nice refinements, including that document browser. But that's also coming soon. Omni Plan 3.12, adding the multiple window support, adding context menus, adding dark mode, and that is also coming soon. And finally, Omni Focus 3.4, that's also in the test flight. This was kind of the last one to get the multi window support, but that is also coming soon. Multi window support, and this is going to be a really awesome feature. Uh, I've been using the test flight. And having my forecast next to projects is really great. And being able to spread out my Omni Focus in the multiple spaces is amazing. It's going to also have contextual menus, dark mode, query tasks, a lot of just different shortcuts. Is that's what the query task is? A lot of new shortcut actions, which will be really phenomenal. So some really great things in Omni Focus 3.4. And those are the updates from the Omni Group. Next up, I want to talk about GoodNotes 5, which is already out and adds multiple window support, dark mode, OCR document scanning, and undo redo gestures. So a lot of great things in there. GoodNotes is the handwriting app that I currently am using as my go-to. And the multiple window support is really awesome. So I can have a notebook of a different GoodNotes notebook in all of the different spaces. So if I'm, say, a student, I could have my textbooks next to my good notes and have a separate space for all my notes. And that is just really phenomenal. And being able to scan in with the new iOS 13 scanning feature is going to be great with good notes because then you can annotate that stuff in the good notes app, which is a great place to do that. So that's good notes five. Next up is a huge update from Keep It Mobile. This update came in two stages. It first rolled out as 1.7 as a part of iOS 13. This included dark mode, scan multiple documents with the camera, as I talked about just earlier, marking up documents and images with that new pencil kit support, improved shortcut support, search and text recognition for attachments, so that OCR feature, and improvements to opening items in other apps, viewing mail messages, markdown previews, and more. So a lot of enhancements just in that 1.7 that rolled out with iOS 13. Regarding the shortcut support, there are 15 new shortcuts available in the shortcuts app with this keep it update. So that's huge. And I'm really excited to dive into all of those enhancements. Now regarding iPad OS, that rolled out a separate update as 1.7.2, which allows multiple windows to be opened up, uses the Apple Pencil for annotation, 
and fix some external display issues and some other things that are really important to be fixed. So keep it mobile, a huge update that really should be an app worth considering as, say, an Evernote replacement for many people. This app has really improved, especially in this update, really great enhancements made here with Keep It Mobile. Next up, Bear. So new features in Bear. It has dark mode support. It has multiple spaces support. You're able to annotate photos and PDFs with that pencil kit support. Other new features, including the ability to encrypt individual notes and lock Bear itself, and there's a lot of other little enhancements that you may find handy. So that is Bear. Some really nice updates there if you do use that text editor. Next is Things. And Things has some really good updates. Things is a task manager for those that don't know about it. Version 3.10 uh, rolled out and some really awesome enhancements here. So multiple windows are in Things. And they do some really cool things with their implementation that I have not seen in other apps. First off, just like the Mac, you can use Command Control N for a new window, and you can use Command W to close a window. So that's a really cool thing where they have keyboard shortcuts to enable that. Uh, they've updated the widget to make the widget look great in dark mode as well, and the Siri shortcut support has been overhauled, adding tons of new abilities. There's now four official things actions, add to to do, show to do, show list, and run things URL. Uh, so a lot of awesome abilities there and supports the system-wide dark mode. There are new gestures uh, that are now supported that, that are the built-in gestures. And they've rebuilt the reminders feature because of reminders big, really reworking. And accessibility, they made sure voice over and voice control are really ready for prime time with being able to use item names in a way that uh, you'd have to really write the app to be able to do. Next up is Drafts version 15. Now, Drafts added some really nice features. Their contextual menus are really impressive. You're able to open a new window right from contextual menus. And speaking of that, there are support for multiple windows. You can drag and drop a text file to another space or split screen, and that's really helpful. There's live markdown previews by doing this as well. Dark mode switching is there. Uh, there's a new quick capture action extension, and there's new extensive shortcut support, which is brand new to this version of Drafts. Uh, a lot of other nice little tweaks and changes, but some solid updates from Drafts, and it really is one of the you know go-to apps for just disposable text, I would say. Just next up is TweetFut 5. I just want to mention that the way they implement the system-wide dark mode is really great because the two-finger gesture that lets you switch between the different modes of light and dark now just lets you switch between the, say, four dark modes and the four light modes for whatever mode you're in. So I really like how they've implemented that. Next, I just want to speak a little bit about a brand new iPad app called Slopes. This is the skiing tracking app or snowboarding tracking app that you'll track on your watch or phone. And they have an iPad app now. And it's a really great app to help you analyze your run. So if you are a snowboarder or a skier, Slopes for iPad is phenomenal. It does support multi-windows as well. And there's handoff between iPad and iPhone. And there's great external keyboard support. So Slopes is now available for iPad. Next up, some Apple apps. iMovie version 2.2.8 adds access files from external hard drives, SD card readers, and USB drives, supports dark mode and the new share sheet, iOS 13, and there's some enhancements to how it handles music. So that's iMovie. GarageBand adds dark mode and the new share sheet, iOS 13. Same thing with the external file support, that is added. And they've added some new downloadable uh, tracks and things like that. Uh, some really nice overall enhancements. Uh, my real question though is where are the iWork updates? I'm recording this the Sunday before you'll receive this. And uh, so far, no iWork updates. There is no multiple window support for pages or numbers. And that stuff really needs to come. So hopefully Apple works on adding that very, very soon. Because iWork apps really do need that support. Next up, Fantastical 2. They've added dark mode, multiple windows, and really phenomenal Siri shortcut support. So if you're looking at you know, automating your calendar usage, look into Fantastical 2. Some really nice enhancements there and multiple windows support. That's awesome to have. 
Next up, pCalc, version 3.9, full support for iOS 13 and iPadOS, including dark mode and improved Siri shortcut supports. And the Siri shortcut support is really where this shines. There are some really powerful parameters that you just need to play around with, uh, letting you kind of talk to Siri and create some really awesome ways of getting data from pCalc through Siri shortcuts. Really great app that only got better with this version 3.9. Next up, I just want to mention Scriptable and JSON. One of the most recent episodes, you can listen to a full interview where I talk about these two apps and how they've been enhanced for iOS 13. But in JSON, you can now create and edit JSON files for the first time. Multi-window support is there. Multi-window support is there in Scriptable. There's some, some contextual menus. And overall, a very nice update that, uh, especially with the series shortcut support, that are going to really change how you're able to use Scriptable. So very good updates there. But listen again to that episode if you have not had a chance to yet. Next up, Darkroom. Darkroom version 4.3 adds a light mode, which is interesting because most apps, they're just adding dark mode. But in this case, light mode is there and it behaves with the system-wide light mode, dark mode. Multiple spaces support is there, shortcut actions and sound effects. So Darkroom is a photo editor and this update really does add a lot, especially with the way shortcuts are handled. You'll be able to pretty much set any of the images from anywhere, filter and frame it and prepare it for export in Darkroom. So if you're doing some batch exports and uh, edits to your photos, Darkroom is a really great place to do that. And finally, Carrot Weather version 4.13 add Siri shortcut support with the new parameters and they do a great job with that. The new get my weather report shortcuts lets you take locations as inputs and spit out weather data as output. And you can choose kind of what outputs you're looking for. And it's really powerful. Dark mode supports there. And speaking of non iPad stuff briefly, independent watch app is there. You can install it without an iPhone present and really awesome uh, updates there from carrot weather. So those were all the major updates to apps that I saw with iOS 13 and iPadOS. I hope you've enjoyed this look from both developers themselves and some updates from me from what developers have been pushing out. iPadOS is a huge update and I hope everyone's getting the most out of it. And if there are any questions you have about iPadOS, do not hesitate to let me know. I would love to address them here on the podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode of iPad Pros, and thanks to all the developers that took the time out of their busy schedules to send in their audio about their iPad OS updates. You can send your feedback to me at iPadProsPodcast at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter at iPadProsPodcast. You can get additional content by supporting the Patreon at patreon.com slash iPadPros. If you haven't already, please head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Every review goes a long way in helping others discover the show. Thanks again for listening.